Hey everybody, we have made it to yet another Wednesday. Thank goodness. I hope you guys are doing really great. Look at all this. We got all these people here already. How cool is that? We got John and Wendy. How you doing guys? So good to see you. So I'm so glad that uh, you guys are already here. This is going to be a, a very good live stream, I hope. And uh, so that's that's my story. I'm going to stick with it. We're going to have fun today, hopefully. We always have fun, though, don't we? So I hope everyone is having a very good, uh, very good week. I got to, let me see. Just got to set up my, okay, there we go. Go down here to library so I can see it on the big screen so I can make sure that everything is okay. And part four, okay, we are definitely live. How does it sound, guys? Let me get rid of that fan. There we go. Brad, good to see you. How's it going, my friend? We got a little bit of a warm spell here. Hey, what's up, Emil? Good to see you. How are you? How's everything going? So the sound is good? Okay, thank you, Wendy. I'm looking on the screen, and I like what I see. So that's good. And so I think I... I actually was well prepared for today. So currently I have the light mixture in the airbrush because whenever we start, hey Tone, good to see you, man. So glad you're here. And so basically what we're gonna do is go right in with the light mixture because remember what I always say, oh, I'm doing okay, thank you so much. It's a little scary here in the New York area, you know, with this whole virus thing and it's getting real, you know. Uh, everybody's with masks and gloves, and it's just really strange. But uh, we're just going to continue. I'm glad to see you, Tone. We're just going to continue to create and and uh, try and create beauty and, and share my technique with you. And uh, so make it more fun for you guys when you do it on your own. Uh, and that's the thing. Paint and draw and spend as much time as you can with the really uh, great people out there, you know? That's what's really important. Hey, Rick, good to see you. Willie, how's it going? So cool. So uh, so that's really great. Uh, yeah, Queens is rough. I mean, Queens is the worst in New York as all the five boroughs. I'm in New Jersey, but I'm only five miles from Manhattan. So it's really getting kind of real up in here, but uh, we'll get through this as we always do, right, Tone? You know, and uh, you know, as a nation and as a planet, we are, you know, as a global, it's something we're into together. So, uh, so I'm I'm glad that you know everyone's okay and uh, just continue being okay. I'm going to try and get rid of some of little bit of an overspray over here first, but let me get on my gloves. Yeah, so has anyone been doing any digital painting lately? Because, uh, you know, that's something that a lot of people are getting into now with, you know, having, you know, isolation and all that stuff. It's bad on both sides. You ain't kidding. You got Manhattan on one side. And you got uh, Brooklyn on the other. It's it's really getting bad, you know. So you just stay in tone. Only if you have to go out there. That's the only reason I'm going out. Because if I have to. But you know, they, you know, as far as you know, we just continue creating your wonderful paintings, you know. And uh, yes, the news can get daunting, you know. So tomorrow I'm going to do a live stream. It's going to be on here and it's also going to be on YouTube at, the, at on Facebook at the same time. And tomorrow is going to be uh, just a simple drawing that uh, drawing tutorial that's for everyone, you know. Hey, the 105 arrived today. That's great. So we got to go ahead and uh, and uh, fix that together. So we should do Skype and uh, work on that together, Brad. You're gonna love that little airbrush. It's really great. Uh, so that's really cool. Yes, you. Wendy did have trouble. Did you get a hold of uh, of Ken, Wendy? I'm just gonna continue getting rid of some of these pencil lines because I don't need them anymore. Let's see. 
We'll use the uh, knock eraser, which is really good. Yes, walk around the block. That's that's good enough, you know. You know, that's less people you see, uh, the less chance of getting this thing. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get rid of any any excess here. So I had to open up the windows because it got kind of warm here today in New Jersey, in the New York area. Oh, they closed down. Oh, boy. So that's rough. So all operations are pretty much closed down with Badger. Holy, holy cow. Everything should get back to normal soon. That's right. Nothing. <laughs> That's right. Airbrushing is the most important or one of the most important, at least to us, right? That's funny. Of course, we don't mean that. So looking at that, I don't think I have to lighten up the picture at all. I think that looks fine as far as on the picture, you know, on the video. So has anyone been working on any uh, airbrush projects or anything like that? I'm just doing some of my nudes uh, to sell. Um, you know, I'm working with uh, a new student, Philip. We're working on another uh, Gene Tierney painting, which is really great. John said he just finished one. That's fantastic. I can't wait to see it. Oh, so you started painting with the Patriot 105. What do you think, my friend? How do you like it? Now, Emil, it's really great. You just, you're going to say bye-bye to your, uh, your Iwatas soon. That's for sure. <laughs> I hook up the air compressor like some kind of ventilator. <laughs> uh... Working on two portraits for two couples. That sounds fantastic. Wow, that's great, Emil. And so, yeah, you know, I'm so glad that you guys... Wendy's working on the water... So you started the watercolor again. I know you were thinking about it, Wendy. That's good to hear. And so I'm just, as you can see, I have the airbrush filled with the medium mixture. Whenever I start fresh, you know, any painting session, I always go with the medium mixture. I mean, the light mixture. Because you're getting warmed up. Even though I painted for about, I don't know, six to eight hours already today. I still got to make sure I'm warmed up with this picture. No, oh, you're really good at watercolor. That's that's not true. You are fantastic with watercolor. We're always harder on ourselves than we are with anyone else. So, so Emil says he's having issues erasing. He was wondering what kind of erases do I use? Okay, so here's a quick rundown. So going from my softest to the hardest, and my rule is whenever you erase something, always go with the most softest and then go progressively harder if you need to. So the softest eraser, of course, is your kneaded eraser. That's your first line of defense. If you could use that and it works, God bless you, that's what you want. Then you have your next, which is the knock. It's a mono 3.8. Really nice and soft yet precise. Then you have two of the mono erasers let me see if I can find it so here's the first one it's the mono zero this mono zero is very good it's an all-purpose one it's a little more uh, precise and a little it does a little more uh, damage to the paper than the not 3.8 because of the uh, pressure per square inch you know it's like really precise so it will do more more damage to the paper there's another knock eraser. 
which right now I'm having difficulty lo uh, locating it. But it's just like this, but it's a, here it is. This is a chisel. And of course, you know, if you want to, you can cut it and you can get like really fine erasing lines like that. So that's really cool. Then if things get really tough, then you could use this, which is an eraser by Faber-Castell. And you can see I put them all the way down. They're to the perfection, 107.5, I believe. Uh, so you see, you use them, and those are very, very aggressive. So that's pretty much uh, my erasers that I use. And there's other erasers that you can use. You have to be careful also that... Uh, Uh, so, you know, you have to be very careful, but you can use the electric eraser. There's several brands. This one is a lower RPM than this one. This is the Helix, which is famous among airbrush artists. And then you have the Stadler. I like the Stadler a lot. See this? You can tell the difference in size. And you can hear this one is faster, uh, faster revolutions per minute. So that basically is uh, my eraser rundown. So I hope that helps, my friend. Wendy says, uh, yes, the mono, those are great. Those are the best. Uh, let's see. So yeah, I mean, it, so the trick is when I was with my student, the trick is, uh, my student today, light is always right. So always be as light as possible because you may need to erase it and you can always get darker. And uh, so, yes, the Helix is great. They're very inexpensive. I think it cost me like eight bucks or something like that. hundred years ago. I mean, I bought mine like in 2000, uh, maybe 2011, 2010 maybe. That's how long ago I had my little Helix. Okay, so I do have my... I do have my light mixture in here. And let's just go ahead and start working a little more and look to refine some shapes. Because once again, we are, we are just right now, just getting warmed up. And this is a good time to start refining some shapes. Wow, now, <laughs> I hope not, Wendy, that would be sad. So we can refine the shapes here, and one of the shapes that we want to refine are the eyebrows. And I can see it goes in a little bit more, like so, and a little bit fuzzy. You can go ahead and uh, get the fuzziness with the, uh, with the edges, you can do it two ways. You can do it with the airbrush, or you can try it with the eraser, or you can actually do both, you know? Oh, Wendy's gonna check out the price of the Helix for you guys. Same thing here, you know, it's pretty soft. So I'm just going to obliterate the edge a little bit, just like that. Just soften up that eyebrow. You know, that's a good thing to do. Then here, it looks like we are a little bit uh, lighter. So, you know, you can see we can always, always have a critical analysis of your work as you're going, especially when you're coming in fresh because you're seeing it with a fresh eye. So I think that's a good thing. Let's see. Now I can go ahead and uh, maybe even use this knock, which is a lot softer on the paper. So always try and use the softest paper possible. That's always your best deal. Softest possible because number one is uh, you don't want to damage the paper. And, uh, and if you stay as light as possible, you can erase a lot easier. Once you go in with the medium mixture, then it's much more difficult, you know? See, $10.99, that's not bad. That's a very good value. And same thing, I'm going to look for some of the information in this, uh, this value shape over here. And I can see it's 
a lot lighter in the corner of her eye because the corner of her eye is much more light facing than everything else, you know? So that's great. That's a good price. Thanks for checking, Wendy. That's fantastic. When we start coming in darker with the medium mixture and everything, you're going to see things are going to start to start to pop and be a little less uh, little less uh, looking unfinished. So we're getting to that point. We're doing the heavy lifting now. That's how I see it. So we had absolutely no snow this year in the Northeast, you know, uh, hardly any. So I think we only had one dusting. Maybe it was three inches that melted the next day. So we did dodge that bullet, but now we're dealing with this bullet uh, that we're dealing with. I'd much rather have big snowstorms, I'll tell you. And I know everyone else would. Same thing over here. We can see that we have a lot of uh, a lot lighter area over here and I'm sort of doing like a dagger stroke I'm sort of flicking the eraser you know Texas hasn't in years I'm planting lemon trees that's very cool and uh, also uh, Emil says he'll send some pics of his work later let me know of course you know any of you guys want a uh, you know when we look at your work and a critique I'll be more than happy to you know, more than happy. So you see, I'm just constantly moving around at this stage. We're still in the light mixture, so we really haven't gone into those uh, darks. Yes, exactly, Willie, very true. You know, we definitely would rather have snow than this. And this little dark shape over here. And so there's a lot of information going on right here in the corner of her forehead. Uh, there's some variations of tone because the, her forehead is turning, right? Lemon pie and lemon cake, that sounds really good. I made a really good lemon cake not too long ago with lemon icing and lemon, oh, that was fantastic. Lemon's good with everything, right? I mean, that's like, but it doesn't, I don't like lemon in vegetable juicing, though. I like lime better in vegetable juicing, but I think uh, lemons are a lot more versatile. No, lot, yeah, lemons are a lot more versatile, especially in teas and whatnot. There we go, and you see, we are just very slowly bringing her together. Now, there are times where, you know, the knock just isn't as precise as we want, and that's when the, so this is a really good one-two punch there, you know, the knock and then the, uh, and then the uh, mono, zero, really good. Avocado, yes, lime is better with avocado, that sounds fantastic, like a guacamole. I know my friend Leticia loves guacamole. She's crazy about guacamole. Okay, and let's over here. Just work on that. And little by little, we'll get to where we've got to go. So, all right, so let's go in with the airbrush, shall we? And see if we could resolve some of this area over here. Everything looks dark right now because we're still in the light mixture. One second rule. One second rule is really going to keep us. Hey, Ron, good to see you, my friend. So cool you're here. So, you know. So how are you holding up there, Ron? And then we're just going to do the one second rule. And we're just going to try and find some of the some of the complexity of the shapes here. And that's, there are this complexity. It's not always just simple value changes. Sometimes there are shapes and negative shapes that we really have to address. So onion, garlic, lime, and cilantro. That sounds amazing. That sounds like salsa.
And like I said, we're just looking for the complexity in her forehead here. So you want to make sure you don't get too dark or too wet, right? You don't want to stain the paper. So you want to make sure that the ink catches up to the surface. And when that happens, uh, it doesn't stain the paper and just get that really nice tone. So that's really crucial. Same thing here. We're just going to continue getting the shape correct of her eyebrow. There we go. And so little things like this that we pay attention to, like her forehead here, that's going to go a long way in getting her likeness in the later stages of the game here. So right over here, you can see that there's more information in that uh, sort of value there. It's not just a, you know, a straight, a straight value, but there's stuff going on in the middle of it. There's information there. We're gonna try and just erase a little bit, but very easy. We're very simple with the paper, you know, very, very careful with that paper. And I'm just doing like little dagger strokes, just sort of flicking that, you know. Gloria, good to see you. How are you? Gloria's here. That is so cool. So glad to see you. So in New Jersey, we're all stuck here in Little Ferry, right, Gloria? So that's not easy. <laughs> well, Wendy says, yay, yeah, estrogen. That's funny. I'm getting rid of some of those hard edges there that were, that are sort of on this area here. It's, they're not hard edges. It sort of bleeds into it. So we got to make sure we soften those edges when we can. And we're going to, you know, come in with white pastel at the end, but we don't want to, you know, ignore things until that happens, right? So we definitely have to address some of those value shifts and stuff like that now, even though they are relative value shifts, because we're not as dark or nearly as dark as we're going to get. Same, same thing here. We have a little bit of a, a light over here. So we're just going to flick that eraser. You see how I'm just flicking it? I'm not rubbing it. I'm just flicking it. And that keeps me from going too dark. And you don't want to go too dark. So I'm just sort of flicking it. Just like that. Being very... Almost think about it. If I was putting this eraser on this girl's face, would I rub it really hard? No, I'll be as gentle as possible. Just like that. So, and then we'll come back and we'll we'll revisit that later. But then we can see that that value shift is uh, a lot softer. So we're just gonna very quietly and softly just relax that value shift there. And we're gonna go right on that dark edge there. So we're gonna aim our eraser we're going to be very very exact same thing here we're going to aim that eraser so we're hitting exactly where we want it's very important you know we are definitely stuck here so until april 30th now right guys that's what it's the president said and us here in new york you know it's pretty rough and uh i know that brad is uh Oh, yes. What is that green eraser? Yes, this is the, uh, Brad, this is the uh, Mono Knock, K-N-O-C-K, 3.8. It really is great. And Wendy has that one. Wendy just got it, right? Didn't you order that, Wendy, I believe? Okay, cool. So right on top of her incisor there, there is this dark of her upper lip. I'm just going to go ahead and apply that. And let's see. There we go. 
go. And we're just going to continue. Uh, yes, uh, not 3.8, correct. Just to reiterate, yep, the 3.8 is really fantastic. Uh, definitely. Uh, really love it. It's, I use it more, oh, I, I would say 50-50 with the mono as far as the most used eraser in my repertoire. And then over here, we're just going to soften that up. Remember, just flicking it, you know, and being very gentle. Because this paper is has a finite amount of uh, strength to it. You don't want to kill it. Uh, definitely, Willie, you'll love this eraser. There we go. So now what we can do is we can go back into the... Um, we definitely can go back into the uh, medium mixture. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh no, they make all kinds of sizes. Knock, I mean, uh, not the knock itself, but Mono has a lot of different erasers, which is really great. It's uh, by Tombo, and they make those markers. They're famous for that. So let me find this medium mixture here. I use a lot of medium mixture today. I'm working on a nude that is almost completed. Uh, so I'm excited about that, you know, getting work done. And, you know, we just have to be relentless, you know, if we want to get better at this. We just have to be consistent. And consistent is every. The consistency is everything, whether you're working out or exercising consistency is really what's you know I feel is the the main difference I feel is uh, what really needs to be uh, let's go back a little bit there okay consistency is everything as far as growing as an artist so try and be as consistent as possible I know life gets in the way and you have to do other things but as far as getting better more important than any class or any kind of uh, workshop or anything is just the consistency. That's the that's the main crux. That's the that's the difference. So that will definitely take you to that next level. And I want you guys to get at that next level. They're starting selling the monorail racers at Michaels. Wow, Michaels is a dirty word. So yes, they had me lifting, working. Un unloading trucks and whatnot and you know I was telling them that I applied because I'm sponsored by most a lot of the supplies that you're using he's like that's great unload some trucks and I'm like great you know and I was like I can't do that <laughs> Michael's with the 40% off coupon yes and I'm really partial to Hobby Lobby those guys are great. Okay, so here's something I see. So if I'm looking closely at her nostril, I can see that it's in more of an angle. See that? We just change that angle just a little bit. And maybe just pull that this way. There we go. Okay, so that's cool. So now we have the medium mixture, so let's continue just darkening down some of the areas. That's what we were doing yesterday when we left, we started darkening some areas. So I see her eyes are darker, the corner of the eye right there. Here is a real nice dark spot. There we go. Oh man, it's rough. You know, Hobby Lobby is a great. So I'm sure my class is canceled because Hobby Lobby is closed. But once they open up again, I will be doing uh, classes weekly there. So that would be a great opportunity for locals to study drawing with me and then maybe pastels down the line, depending how successful it goes, of course.
And we're just going to continue moving around. Hobby Lobby is huge compared to Michael's. Very true. Huge as far as the company and also huge in their stores. And they have much better prices and a better selection. As far as framing goes, they are much better. Hand, hand, head and shoulders better. Always remember the one second rule, I always tell you guys, and uh, it's so crucial with the one second rule. It's really gonna make a big difference. So definitely you wanna do that and keep that in mind. It's kind of dark over here. It gets dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something a little bit interesting. I'm going to use some frisket film on the arms because I don't want to darken them. Uh, basically this area. Well, maybe I'll do that. I don't know. We're going to think. See how it goes because I don't want too much overspray hitting here. And so I may go ahead and do that. Let's see. Not sure yet. Little dagger strokes, keeping the air on. And what I'm doing is really addressing this dark over here. This dark area over here in the hair. That's going to give volume, you know. We're getting to the point where all the hard work is starting to pay off, guys. So Wendy, I, uh, I mean, uh, Gloria, I see, are you going to start a herb garden? Because uh, Gloria has this new, so maybe she's going to start some herbs for her, uh, you know, for some of her dishes that she cooks. So that's pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm not sure. But I know you have like a, a large little greenhouse thing that Gloria got today. Is anyone out there going to start doing vegetables or herbs or anything uh, now that the spring is here? I'm thinking of doing that, definitely. Uh, well, yes, uh, good question. Uh, I just went into the medium mixture just a second ago, uh, Brad, so you can see things are getting a little more ramped up. Yeah, me too. Too much grass. Not the grass that we smoke. Is that it, Wendy? <laughs> And while I'm looking at the one second rule, oh, no problem. It just happened only a second ago, Brad. <laughs> Wendy already dug it up and smoked it. Way to go, Wendy. So we're really gonna keep an eye on that one second roll and to make sure that I don't go a little crazy here in the arm. It's so soft here, I, I almost feel like I can't go ahead and use the free. Hey, super, how's it going? Good to see ya. So glad to see you, my friend, how you been? And with the one second rule, we're really concentrating on, on looking and then painting. And that really keeps us from sort of doing our own thing and not paying attention to what's happening. So, you know, when we're painting, that one second rule is really going to help us. And as you can see, that as we go in with the medium mixture, things start to uh, really clean up, so to speak. And this is not even the meat, this is not even the dark mixture yet, right? So that's good news. And you know, as I want a smooth large area, I'm gonna increase my distance. And my distance right now is approximately two inches from the surface. 
And like when I'm getting close where I don't want overspray, I'm gonna go down to one inch, you see that? And when you increase your distance and decrease your distance, it's so easy to uh, go from uh, lighter to darker and also from large to uh, smaller areas. And you don't have to change the how much you pull back on the trigger. So I always say the paint in three dimensions, you know, you have that ability because use the airbrush, use the principles and the physical properties of the airbrush to do things that other artists uh, have to work hard on if they're working in pencil, pastel, or airbrush. You can just change the direction and just totally change it, you know? So that's pretty cool. Wow, take care of yourself with that asthma, my friend. So that's very, very serious, you know? <laughs> oh, so... Uh, so they deem pot stores essential services. Wow, that's something. It is essential to potheads. I know that, you know. <laughs> so right next to it is probably going to be where, you know, people have munchies right next to it. Because I know that's going to be essential for those who are, you know, smoking doobies all day, you know. Of course, I'm not talking about medical marijuana. That's a whole different story. And that's... That's different. I'm just talking about the recreational peeps out there, you know? Uh, just gonna use my freehand shield here. It's just gonna, you know, not make it too soft. And I see it gets a little bit more hard edged right over here. Let's address that. See that? We just make it hard edged as it goes towards her hair. So we're gonna leave this uh, a little bit lighter. Just pull it out, some of this value here. And I just wanna make sure I get this value on both sides very, uh, how do you say, uh, very even or as even as possible. Yes, in liquor stores, people would lose them. That would be true, man. They close down liquor stores, man. People would lose their minds. Stuck in a house with no alcohol for some people is like hell on earth. I'm not a big drinker, although I think it's cool for those who can handle it. That's great, you know? No judgment here. This is a no judgment zone, which is cool. Uh, not medicine at pot store tone oh so so i know in canada is is uh marijuana legalized in the whole country uh brad because it's not here some states but not the tri-state area and you got to go to seattle and colorado for that oh i see it kills pain so i can understand that so it's medicinal, right, sir? And that's a whole different ball game. There we go. So as you can see, we are just reiterating some of these darks here. Now, as we do that, we realize, oh, you got to be 18 years old. That's a good thing. That's for sure. So now we're gonna start with the knock and we're gonna see if we can do it with the knock. If not, we'll get progressively uh, more aggressive. Uh, I'm still gonna do the flick. Remember, this is her face, so we wanna be gentle. And if we just pretend that's what we're erasing, that's where we're erasing, uh, that will help us to realize that we have to be gentle. Now, I made sure I wasn't working on this area before I started erasing because that would be horrible. You would tear this up to shreds. There we go. So you see, I'm not going too crazy. I'm setting up for a little bit of the white pastel down the line. It's too premature at this point to think about doing that. But we're like chess players. We're thinking so many moves ahead. So, and then here we can... Uh, 
go ahead and just get a little bit of that eyelid there, which is really good. So Tone says he's working on his fourth, 18. So, <laughs> well, you look young, my friend. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it, Tone. So, so that's, that's great. And once again, I'm just going to make sure I have this negative shape here, negative space. And we're always setting up for what's coming next. So now remember that this is a cast shadow from her arm. Now, what is what are the characteristics of a cast shadow? So the characteristics of a cast shadow, which I'll show you guys real quick. Where is it? Okay, let's go down a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys real quick. So here is, you know, a circle. So we'll just draw a circle, just like that. Let me see if I can, there it goes, that shows the circle. So there's my circle. And then our light source is coming from here and then uh, let's say right over here we have uh, you know sort of an egg shape right and so here's our cast shadow and basically the light is coming from here and then we'll use our airbrush for this so here's our form shadow this is shadow on the form that is basically uh, the form itself, it gets light on this side and on this side it gets shadow, right? So we'll just keep working at it till we get the highlight. So right here would be our terminator. This is where no light actually, it's, this is the most uh, hidden area from the light and that will be our darkest area so you see that so on this side everything gets progressively lighter so you have your terminator you have your transition tone you have your your dark lights your light lights and then your highlights on this side you'll have your terminator and then it'll work progressively towards your reflected light Reflected light is when light is bouncing around and it's probably bouncing off of here and you're getting light off of the the floor, right? Or the, you know, the ground, that sort of thing. Now on this side, of course, you should have the same thing going on as far as light and shade, but it's a little bit different, but you're still getting the same properties. But with this, the, the can, it's gonna cast a shadow over this whole thing. And it's actually going to cast its shape on top of it. So this is a cast shadow. So the shadow is actually casting from its object onto another object. So that's and what it does, it actually wraps around the object like a sheet. So your cast shadow will actually describe the form. So, uh, oh, Brad says, uh, Tim is still doing online courses. That's where you learn secrets like how to save your paper. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate that, my friend. So you see how this shadow will actually follow the form of, of that. So I said all that to say this, right? So here's our cast shadow. And let's get lighter, of course. Here's our cast shadow. And I gotta remember where I was. And so you see how it's following the form of her face here. It just follows the form of See, here's the cast shadow. It's going to cast its shape onto the form 
which is the face, is casting the shadow from the arm, but that cast shadow follows the form of the face. So as you see, it's going to wrap down into the contour of the cheek. So that's why by knowing that a cast shadow follows the form of the face, you're going to look for that. It's a lot easier to it's a lot easier to get somewhere if you know what you're looking for. So what I want you guys to always look at cast shadows and stuff like that. That's really important. Let me see if I missed any questions. Uh, oh, the best lip painter. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so as you see, uh, that's so important to really realize that, you know, your cast shadows are going to follow the form that the shadow is upon. And the one second rule is really just going to help you make sure that you're not thinking about other things when you're painting, right? Uh, that could happen, you know, where, you know, all of a sudden you're involved and you're talking about things or you're thinking about, you know, what are you going to get for dinner? And then before you know it, you're painting something, you're like, wow, that looks nothing like what I'm painting. So that's why that one second rule is crucial. Uh, it's so important. It just, you know, very, very important. I'm going to take my knock eraser, which is still very soft, and you can see how easy it erases, even with the knock eraser. I haven't gotten uh, the more aggressive eraser yet. I always start with the softest and then work progressively aggressive if need to. Only if need be. So you see, right now we're working on her hair. Now, with that being said, we can see that, you know, the dark of her hair over here, which is very important, we have to go ahead and address that. Let's see if we can uh, blow that up. And the most important thing that we really have to worry about when doing this, guys, is that we have to be patient in this stage. This stage is the light mixture. Uh, actually, we're just into the beginning of the medium mixture. So now things are starting to ramp up a little bit, but still with the hair here, we're still in the early going. So you wanna, I know we, we definitely wanna go in there and start making the hair beautiful, but we have to, we have to pull back the reins a little bit before we get too far, right? So that's what we're gonna do. And we never really, we never really want to become photorealists. Although our paintings may look like a photograph, that's not our intentions. Our intention is to create a work of art and really see things for what they are and recreate uh, our own perspective. Okay, so I can see we can deepen some of the values here. Now I'm going to decrease my distance, so you'll see. Let me get to this scene over here. So you'll see I'm going to decrease my distance when I'm doing this detail right here. Let me put something on top of here so she doesn't fly around. So I'm really getting close, probably like half an inch. But keeping it fuzzy because the edges are very soft. There we go. So that is really going to go a long way. This is a very dark area. So we can start reiterating this dark here. other screen there we go so it is around 10 20 so guys if you get a chance just uh, give a quick message to make sure that the messaging is working so with
with the media mixture. So when you go to the media mixture from the dark mixture, uh, the media mixture, from the light mixture to the media mixture, things are going to have a little less control. So you have to be a little more careful. As you go darker to the medium and to the dark mixture, uh, you're going to have a lot more less wiggle room, you know? Cool, okay, so you guys are here, so that's good. just want to make sure, because you guys remember how it used to be at 10.30, I would lose you, but I think that's a thing of the past. I think XSplit fixed that, so that's good to hear. So you see I reiterated that neck there of hers, and what we're going to do is really not much it's very soft edge there I can definitely go with a hard edge right here on her bicep so let's go ahead and do that perpendicular in that parallel and then the bicep is making a cast shadow onto the deltoid over here see that And let's use a freehand shield. And we'll just crawl it along the surface. So you, you just have to wipe. So you don't have to find the perfect uh, curve. You can just basically uh, just crawl along the surface and then you get that edge perfectly hey Ray how's it going how's everything so the focus let me see how it is I'm gonna double check so let's see Ray how's it going Ray good to see you so let's now this pic particular picture is out of focus I, I picked a you know a little out of focus uh, picture just to put a challenge to myself to uh, work with photos that aren't perfect, you know, so I'm really paying attention to what I'm seeing, you know, so uh, That's it might seem less in focus than other other images, you know that I've worked on before especially the last one with Michael David Adams painting uh, from his photograph, which was really just great focus on that one Is this better because uh, yeah, so this is pretty much how how much it's in focus in person, Ray, you know? Ah, oh, things are going well. Just might get better soon. I'm glad to hear that, Ray. That's amazing. And that makes me happy. Uh, and the artwork you're doing is really fantastic. I just want you to say, want to tell you that. So what we're going to do is we're going to move that dark away from, and remember if you want less overspray, paint away from the area uh, you don't want the overspray because the cone's going that way and not this way, you see? A little ambidextrous over here. Uh, you can always move things around and uh, if you're painting a large area. See how I'm moving away from the skin so there's less overspray and I'm always like at a 45 degree angle I'm never doing a straight spray so I'm working on uh, in my other studio I'm working on a large pastel painting right now and uh, I'm in the early going and I have it on the easel and I have to say that working on an easel on a vertical is definitely easier than working horizontal like this. You do have better control. Uh, for me, I'm so used to it after all of this, so it's all good, you know? But yeah, a lot of people ask, is it better? It is better in the early going to work horizontal, I think, uh, if you're, you know, beginning an airbrush artist. Uh, but then, you know, whatever you need. If you're going to be doing demonstrations or videos, you're definitely going to have to work horizontally. So I'm doing it, you know, out of a need, you know. 
And so we're just going to continue developing her. So where, so what you want to, this is the questions you want to ask while you're painting. You say to yourself, okay, so where am I neglecting? You know, where are some of the areas where I'm not paying as much attention to, you know? So that's really important. Um, yes, uh, so Willie, the old days at 1030 when everything would go kaput, right? Do I work standing up and sitting? Both, definitely. Uh, well, thank you. I appreciate that, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, it just comes out of a need, you know. It came out of a need to work sitting down. So sometimes I'll work standing up. If I'm working on a large background, I'll stand up. Uh, I think now, as far as sitting up and standing up, it's pretty much very similar for me. But you do have slightly more control standing up. Uh, you can use your body more. You can use your upper body, sort of lock your whole upper body and sort of sway back and forth. And so you lock your arms, your elbows, your shoulders, and then you just move your body. You can do that much more effectively if you're standing up. Standing up and vertically is probably the best way if you're starting an airbrush artist, as an airbrush artist. Uh, but you know, but we're all different, right? We all have our our own needs and what's comfortable to us, you know? <laughs> Brad says I can do it standing on my head. You know what? That might be an idea. I'm going to try that in the next live stream, you know? <laughs> so we're neglecting this area, guys. So uh, uh, now Wendy says she needs to learn this. Is that? Uh, yes, you need to learn about locking your, your upper body. And uh, that's going to go a long way. So you see here, what I'm doing is I am painting the airbrush away from the skin towards the dark area. So, and I talked about that earlier. By doing that, the cone is going that way and less overspray here. Most of your ink is going where you want it. We're gonna go much darker. This is still the medium mixture. And so when we go with the dark mixture, we'll get the value we're looking for. But right now we're just catching everything up. Remember, we're working everything together. So we have to start catching things up, which is so important. Ray says he found sitting down when working at the easel is really hard on the back. I could see that, definitely. Uh, and uh, Wendy says, better get a cup cover. Oh yeah, so uh, <laughs> for the coffee, that's right. So you see I'm at a 45 degree angle going away from her arm and I am doing my dagger strokes. And Always don't worry so much of how it looks. We just have to stick with the program, stay with the recipe, and we are going to be okay. So we're in the medium mixture. We still know we have to go a long way in the medium mixture, then the dark mixture, and then the white pastel. So we have a long way to go. So to really say, I don't like the way it looks and get nervous if it doesn't look like her, you're going to ruin it. It's almost like uh, not seeing the whole chessboard when you're playing chess. You're going to have someone sneak up on you and use that against you. Here we don't mind overspray because it's pretty dark. So I'm not going to worry so much about that 45 degree angle. But I'm probably, yeah, I'm going to do a lot less as you can see. I'm about two inches from the subject right now, two inches from the paper. And I'm going to make sure I don't get too dark. I don't want to stain that paper. That would really be counterproductive. And that would cause more work for us to do. And remember this Timism, which is if you, uh, if you don't want to overspray, make sure you paint away from the subject. Away from... No, if you don't want to overspray, paint away from the area... You want to protect so you don't want to overspray paint away so remember that gotta write that down 
There we go. So we're getting darker. So Tone says he sits on an easel uh, since his back hurt. So I can definitely see how sitting down. Sitting down is more comfortable as in the long term, right, guys? Definitely. Uh, you know, as far as, like, just getting, like, better aim and everything, I would definitely say in the early going right now for me, uh, I just think that uh, I'm pretty much the same on both things, but I think that uh, life's a little bit easier uh, with the hard, with the vertical. With the vertical on the easel, definitely. Definitely a little easier. And uh, Ray says he has seven fused discs in the back, starts to stiffen up really quickly. Wow, and I can definitely understand that, sitting at the easel. So working like I do, I know you work. Now, Ray works at like a like a 35 degree angle. Is that true? Would that be a good assessment, Ray? You work at like a 35 to 45 degree angle? Because we work together. Uh, Ray was took a couple of my classes, uh, one of my classes, and uh, he worked on that angle, and that was really good. And whatever is comfortable for us, really, that's the that's the real thing. So right now, I'm gonna make sure I get this hard edge perpendicular and not parallel. So you see, little thirty degree, okay, close, but not quite, well, not quite there yet. So dirty degrees pretty cool. I know it was really shallow, Ray. Ray, are you gonna do the illustration board on that piece? Are you gonna use that? Or are you gonna try and get the uh, the smaller uh, size of the color line paper? Try and get the client to do that. So as you guys paint more, you're gonna get commissions. Uh, you can guarantee that commissions will start coming in the more you do airbrushing. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get. And you're going to all be surprised. Now, uh, Ray gets commissions, which is really cool. Wendy gets commissions. And uh, a lot of times it's word of mouth. Sometimes, you know, you'll do it from maybe doing a live stream or something like that. Uh, Tone says he was scared to get surgery when the surgeon said it could be worse. Wow. So, I can understand that, you know. That's definitely understand where you're coming from, Tone. So, as you can see, things are getting a little bit cleaner as we go. And they're going to get cleaner still as we, as we go forward. Uh, Ray says he hasn't heard back from them yet. He thinks they are going to go for the larger size. And yes, the cold press illustration board. Remember, there's cold press and hot press illustration board. Cold press is the has a texture. Hot press is a smooth texture. Of course, hot press means it's like iron, like like ironed out. So there's no texture. So a little bit more difficult uh, to work with. There we go, and let's see if we can reiterate this arm here. There we go. And we're just gonna stick with the program. Same thing over here, move around. If you see something, go ahead and address it. And then after we do this, we're going to look and see where are we neglecting, you know, what area is not getting the attention, and make sure we go ahead and address that. So the lower uh, left-hand corner, we're going to go ahead and darken that. It's a little light. So you see, we keep ourselves from getting pigeonholed and painting ourselves into a corner where, you know, one area is just horrible and... You know, how do we fix it? Or one area is really beautiful and the rest of the painting looks uh, terrible. So, yes, yeah, see how that medium mixture, and we haven't even gotten into the dark mixture, just sort of cleans things up, Brad, right? And uh, moving up to the 24 by 30 will be interesting. Yes, I know that 24 by 36 
you can actually cut that right in half and make it a, a 24, uh, no, a 36 by 40. If you cut it in half, that's two 24 by 36s. So that might be something. 24, oh no, it's 20, it's, uh, what is it? Uh, 30 by 40. Something like that. Yeah, I know you can get two 24 by 36s out of it. I'm pretty sure. Twenty-four by thirty is a good size, definitely. Oh, thirty-six by forty. Yes, uh, thirty-six by forty. If you cut that in half, that could be twenty-two. Oh, two twenty-four. That would be two twenty by twenty-four by thirties. You're right. You're right, sir. Or something like that. Math was never my strong suit, as you guys can probably gather that. Although I do love math. And how mathematicians can really see the world differently. You know, I like classical uh, math, you know. Uh, you know, equations and uh, theories and stuff like that, which is really cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on this area here. I think we're out of media mixture, so let's go ahead and reload media mixture. And then we can, you know, work on another layer and then reassess, you know. Uh, 18 by 20. Hmm. Now that would be cutting it down uh, to 18 by 20s, or you can actually just cut it 1 24 by 36. I'm not sure. I like 24 by 36. That's one of my favorite sizes. It's more of a more of a uh, rectangle, but I just love it. It's a really nice size. It's very imposing on the wall, which is nice. It has a nice presence to it, especially when you frame it. Uh, are you a millennial, Tim? No math without a calculator? No, I just like classical math, you know, like uh, geometry and algebra and that stuff I like, calculus, but simple, simple other stuff is like blah to me, you know? Hey, Mike, how's it going? How you feeling? Much better? But yeah, I definitely, I'm not good with the simple math, you know, uh, Brad, but the more complex math, I really get it. You know, I really get geometry, trigonometry and that stuff because it's more thinking, you know? It just seems... Uh, I don't know, it just seems like more interpretive, I think. Pythagoras and all those cats. <laughs> Be careful not to stain the, the uh, paper. Like once you start seeing moisture, definitely stop. Don't stay in one area too long, guys. That could cause a problem. So right here, we can just darken around her ear. Now we're just seeing just a little hint of an ear. It's just her earlobe is getting, uh, uh, yeah, when it comes to like, Brad, like little things like division and, uh, you know, like finding percentages, I'm, I'm dead in the water. My mind just doesn't work that way, you know, Brad? But as far as, uh, you know, theorems and postulates and, and geometry, I'm, I'm there, man. I can get that, you know, with the Pythagorean theorem and, you know, the right triangle and finding the angles of each. That I can do. The other stuff, my mind doesn't go there. Uh, the only math that I like is counting money. I hear that. That's pretty cool. I don't get to do that too often. <laughs> That's funny. So uh, I asked earlier, any guys out there, Brad, have you been doing any of the uh, digital painting on Procreate a little bit? Because I know Brad is uh, working on his uh, studio, so I'm excited to see how that's coming. 
Uh, Ray says that painting I did of Patrick Stewart is already gone, but I used a dryer sheet to add some texture to the face. Really worked out well considering how large the portrait was. Very good. That's a pretty good idea. So that's really nice. And um, so it sold. So after you painted it, you had a you had a buyer. That's great, man. Congratulations. So Ray is my very first, uh, very first uh, Skype uh, student. Uh, he's doing very well, you know. You definitely can see in his work. Wendy too. Wendy was my second, and then we have Brad, and now we have uh, Peter. Now, not I'm sorry, not Peter. Phil. Phil is. Uh, my student right now he's doing amazing we're doing gene tierney a different gene tierney Ray. uh gene tierney is great to paint wasn't that a fun uh painting to work on uh yeah uh brett i agree the the uh patrick stewart's fantastic Okay, so now we're darkening things down and we can maybe uh, just keep looking where we can go a little bit darker. So right now we're at the point where we're looking at the hole and just catching everything up, right? That's what we have to do. Uh, Mike S. says, hey Wendy, I was serious, like your avatar pick. You have a bigger one? Oh, okay. Well, I, Wendy takes a lot of good pictures. Uh, now, you know, Wendy uh, is very photogenic, right? That's what I feel, too. Still making sure we don't go too dark and we don't stain the paper, right, guys? Uh, so it didn't last 15 minutes. So after you you sold it after 15 minutes, I can believe it. Congratulations, my friend. Now that's that's what I call a successful painting. A lot of Star Trek. Was it a Star Trek fan out there, or just a Patrick Stewart fan, or that sort of thing? I think so, Wendy. Everyone thinks so. You take very good photos, very photogenic. And uh, now, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our knock eraser and we're going to see where we can erase here and there to uh, sort of try and pull out some of the lights. So we're going to make sure that we're gentle yet again. We're just going to move around, see where we can lighten things up, you know. There we go. And we're just flicking. See that? Just flicking ever so gently. And you see how we can create the variation of value. We have that little dark over here. And then we'll come back in with the light mixture and soften that up. Wendy is a shooting star. <laughs> Wendy is a star, right? That's for sure. So like I said, there is no rush. It just, you just take your time. You just move around and you're just assessing, you know, okay, where can I... Where can I clean up, right? Where are things not looking quite like my reference, right? And that's what we are all about right now. Now, remember, I was saying uh, today in one of my classes, uh, yes, come on, Wendy, you don't want me to paint your lips, <laughs> Willie says. And Mike says he's a meteor that hit the ground too hard. <laughs> a lot of space talk today. Um, remember, you have 
two different uh, details. You have details in the light area. Details in the light area are like shouts. And what makes a detail in the light area a shout is that it has pretty much the full range of lights and darks, right? So you see here we have a really dark dark, we have some medium values, and we even have a light value. However, when you go into the shadows, everything is going to be a whisper. What causes a whisper detail in the shadows? You'll see that the values are much closer to one another, right? So you have this value and maybe this value. So they're close to one another. And so, and also the edges are softer. So you see, we still have details in the shadow area, but the details in the shadow area are very, very quiet. So uh, let me just show you some of that. So you see, we have this cast shadow of our arm coming down here. And right next to that cast shadow, it's lighter on the forehead here. And we are just going to very lightly, because we're on her face, we're just going to lightly uh, erase that. Setting up for some white pastel we can put on there a little bit later. Now, this is, this is the thing. This is where you want to... Uh, so let me lighten this up and I'll show you. Okay, so right here, you'll see that even though there's a cast shadow, this part of our orbital ridge comes forward, so you're going to see a little bit of light right there. Now, that little bit of light uh, describes the form. So if we zoom out, you can see that that gives some character and actually starts to uh, catch the character of, of her face, and that's what you want. Uh, you know, who she is, an individual... No one's like her in all the world, and that's what you're looking for. Harvey Dinnerstein, who is who was my mentor and I studied with in his studio for almost four years, he said to me, when you're painting a person, you want to look and see what makes them different than everybody, and you want to slightly exaggerate it. And there is where you find the character in your portrait. And I thought that was so poignant, and that stuck with me. Uh, since the day he said that, uh, over, over like 25 years ago. So remember that. If you want your portrait to have a little bit extra oomph and have a little bit extra uh, character, accentuate what makes them who they are. Like almost like a, a very moderate caricature, just an element of caricature in your portrait. And that will help you. Remember, we have Xerox printers and we have printers and Xerox machines. We don't need to just copy exactly. We can go ahead and really, uh, really pull out some things that we see uh, in that person. Our own perspective of that person. What made you paint them in the first place? Uh, it's not a commission, right? So try to accentuate that. And, uh, and that makes it more interesting and more exciting. So definitely look for that little bit of what makes them them and just try and concentrate on that and see what happens. I think, uh, I think you'll find you're pleasantly surprised at the results. So I studied with Harvey Dinnerstein for about, um, hmm, I would say, you know, about four years almost. And that's at the National Academy School of Fine Arts. And I was a scholarship student there. I was very blessed to be living in the New York area at the time. So uh, I really am happy about that. I was very fortunate, very fortunate indeed. Uh, Mike says, yes, Tim, if you want your portrait to have extra, make sure Wendy has frosting on her lips when you paint her pretty face. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so that's what I am uh, just going to 
Uh, just paint a cake instead. <laughs> Haven't painted a cake just yet. And so as you can see, we are just using that eraser to really pull out some of the accentuation, uh, some of the larger shapes in her hair. So you'll see right here, we have a shape of her hair, just like right there. There we go. So the one second rule is really going to help us not to go off on our own tangents. And so you see how we are starting to really get a sense of her pushing her hair up, right? Uh, oh, so I'm glad you're feeling better, Mike. That's a good thing. I know Mike was feeling under the weather with like a flu type of thing. And this day and age, anyone has a flu, it's so scary. Uh, I don't even have to explain that one why everyone knows you know so i'm so glad you're okay you know thank god so you see for the larger areas i'm using the uh i'm actually using hmm let me see i think that's okay using my kneaded eraser for the larger areas going as soft as i can so that actually worked and setting up for the white pastel coming up which is really cool. Now I can continue getting rid of some pencil lines. Remember, think of pencil lines in your painting as uh, training wheels, right? So when you're teaching your kid or you're, remember you learning, you didn't take those training wheels off until you were ready to just continue gliding and learning and you know how to go forward and ride on your own. So the same thing, so let's say I have this clavicle here, right? And I decided to, okay, I'm just going to erase it without really reiterating that. Uh, that could really uh, make more work for you. So make sure you don't get rid of the pencil lines too premature. Make sure you don't get rid of the pencil lines prematurely. So Mike says he has a question for me on camera views. Sure, what questions do you have, sir? Now, uh, as I'm working here, I'm just gonna continue cleaning up. So I'm gonna use my freehand shield uh, right over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I just clean up this edge. For some reason we don't, I find that I leave the corners pretty much not painted in. So now I very consciously paint the corners because when I'm done, I'm like, why didn't I go dark in the corners, right? I sort of uh, lose them. This, and uh, Mike says the small view, the eraser, the small view, the eraser is blue green and the large view, it is green. Yeah, that's true. It's a little bit cooler on this one than here. This one is a little green. A different cameras have, you know, like one is a Canon, this is the overhead. So this is a very high-end Canon, it's a Canon SL2. It's a really good sensor, so your colors are more on the money here. On here is more uh, of a uh, cooler tone, but that's a webcam, which is the Logitech 9, C920. Good camera, but you know, I would have to tweak it. And uh, you know, since it's a monochrome, I don't really get too involved with that, uh, too much worrying about that. But that's good that you noticed that, that's for sure. So I think she's uh, starting to clean up a little bit and that's where we are just cleaning her up. And, uh, and that's really, you know, where you are in the mid game. The mid game is really, you know, we did all the hard work, the heavy lifting with the uh, light mixture. So now it is cleanup time. So this Friday, what I'm gonna do, it's gonna be on this channel and also it's going to be on Facebook. I'm going to have a uh, live stream. Uh, it's going to be on Facebook and here. And it's just going to be uh, Friday night. And it's sort of going to be like a virtual, uh, a virtual just, you know, if you bring your drinks or your soda or your grape juice or your wine or whatever. And we're just going to do something that everyone can do with a paper and pen. 
So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to email you guys and uh, put it on Facebook. And so it's going to be both for my YouTube people and my Facebook, and we're all going to be able to talk. So it's going to be a very large group of people, hope, hopefully, because we're all going to be stuck in on Friday. So that's my goal. So I think that would be pretty cool. It's not going to be airbrush, just because airbrush is more, you know, for people who are much more advanced. I want to do something for everyone tomorrow at around 4 o'clock. I'm going to do something that is... Uh, geared for adult and kid is, kids as well. So, you know, maybe little ones, stuff like that. I want to do that. So tomorrow at 4 o'clock, maybe even later. Uh, actually, just like this, it will be cool. So so looking forward to, oh, yes, definitely, uh, and Willie, I'll let you guys know. So definitely tomorrow at 4 or 5, you know, maybe a little bit later because people get off at 5, so maybe... So we'll see. I'm not sure exactly what time tomorrow, but it's definitely going to be 8 o'clock on Friday. So that's going to be fun. And, uh, you know, it's only so much Netflix we could watch, right? <laughs> so tomorrow is going to be more geared, uh, Wendy, for everyone, but a little more geared for kids doing something a little bit more uh, that they might find. Maybe a cartoon or something. Maybe just something... Uh, you know, to just have fun, you know? There's a lot of seriousness in the world today. So, you know, my mom was like, maybe you should start doing some things that are a little more lighthearted. So I think that would be pretty good, you know? And uh, that's what we need to do. We need to lift each other's spirits during this time. I think that's a good thing. And what better thing than art to lift spirits, right, guys? Art and music and poetry and all that really beautiful stuff that makes life worth living. Okay, so we are just continuing to uh, clean things up. Let's do that over here. Now, what we can do, so we're still with that medium mixture. We can definitely see if I have any incongruencies. And I think there's one here. I think I... Uh, Just misshapened her eyebrow just a little tiny bit over here. I think I went a little too dark. There we go. Remember, so this is these are the three things. Uh, and I worked on it today. Uh, now, uh, now Brad says musical artists doing their thing during this crisis. We can do something also. Exactly, Brad. Exactly. And, uh, and let's see, uh, let me go ahead and turn over and I'm gonna, so I was gonna touch on something and I was thinking about it and I'll get back to that because I actually lost my train of thought. <laughs> that happens sometimes. So I do have something to touch on, guys, but I'll get back to it as soon as I remember what I was going to say. So, okay, yes, so this is what I was going to say. So there are four things to look for when you're painting and drawing, and I'm going to write them down. And I think they're great, too, because if you remember these, it will be fantastic. So the first thing we're going to worry about uh, when working uh, are the contours or the outlines, right? You want to get the contours correct. That's important. And then you're going to get the inner shapes, you know, like the, the shadows and everything like that. You'll get those inner shapes. That's so important. And then after that, you're going to get the values, right? Values are crucial. So if you remember these when you're painting, and then the fourth are the edges right so those are the four major ones and then after that you have number five which is you know really advanced and that is the uh, the values within the values now even if you don't understand what I'm saying right now totally write them down 
And I want you to really follow along uh, with some of the past live streams, look at uh, some of the photographs that you're working. And I want you to see that, you know, you got the lines, you have the inner shapes, right? Your inner shapes will be like this shape here, right? That would be your inner shape. And then we have, uh, then you have the, the, uh, the, the inner shapes would be like the shape of this dark, right? And then from there, you'll have the values. You'll see how this is your darkest dark and then your different values and how to relate to each other. And then you have, you know, the values, but then the shapes of how they blend in with the adjacent shapes. So you see right here, the values shift from this part of this shape to here is pretty harsh. And then it softens up as you go further down. So that's really going to help take your portraits to that next level. Not so, not as much when you're working in landscapes, just as much when you're doing still lives. I don't know who does still lives anymore. Not too many people, but um, you'll see that edges, you know, are so important. So if you do, if you just write down those five contours, inner shapes, values, edges, and then advance the values within the values, you are going to be on the way of uh, really taking your art to that next level. Those are very advanced techniques, and that's uh, really what you want to aspire to, aspire to really see that. Does the ink erase after it's set for days? Sure. It really doesn't change. Uh, it pretty much, uh, it doesn't fix or anything, because it's basically soot and water, you know? So just like watercolor, well, not like watercolor. Um, it's waterproof, but you can rub it. It's not so much adhered to the surface. It doesn't have anything like, so like if you have acrylic ink, it's all in the word, right? Acrylic, acrylic turns into a plastic and the plastic uh, actually adheres to the surface and it bonds, right? But India ink never really bonds. So that's a good thing, you know? And no, you're doing, you're getting much better at that, Wendy. You're not as heavy handed as you were before. So that is so good, you know. Uh, and so right now we're just continuing to clean up. And then we're going to uh, just very slowly move into the dark mixture. But we got time for that. So never, never be in a rush, right? Never, ever be in a rush. So this is part four. So I'm predicting part six is probably when we're going to finish this. Next week will probably be the introduction to the dark and maybe just some of the white pastel. Now, one of the things about this particular work that uh, I like is that uh, in the direction of going my own work, I'm starting to realize that I need to uh, take my my work and work from photographs that aren't so perfect because it's going to force me to actually see what I'm painting. You can definitely get into a rut of having every photograph perfect that you're painting from because you want to see uh, you want to see what you're what you're painting, right? You want to make sure that you are being very uh, observant, and I feel that being observant like that, you can definitely, uh, you know, really get better as an artist. You know, so let me add a sauce and show you something that I did do, and uh, which has uh, a lot less. Uh, focus and so that's pretty much the direction I'm going right now let's go to media files and pictures and where is she I'm just gonna pull her up one two three just gotta find her okay so here's Simone the one I painted on at uh, digital right and right here so you can see how this is not a perfect picture you know the lights and darks are not 
Okay, Wendy, take care. So uh, I, and if you're back, uh, you know, if you're back before, you know, 1130. So if you're not, I hope you have a great night, Wendy, and stay safe. Uh, so, uh, so right here, you can see what I mean is that you can take a photograph that's not so hot, meaning they're not strong lights and darks, and you can actually push yourself to see better, push yourself to, you know, see these little variations of tone and sort of work pretty much all the way in the mid-tones except for some of the darks here and there. So it's sort of a, a challenge, you know? Now Brad says, art of this caliber next uh, needs to be behind glass, in his opinion. Oh, thanks. Okay, that's cool. And uh, so definitely. Uh, so Mike says, Tim, if you want to protect the art after done, can you spray it with something? Uh, Brad is pretty much going in the right direction, Mike. Uh, I'm a pastel painter. I've been doing pastel paintings uh, since I was like 19 years old. And I studied with the best. And what Harvey told me was, and I adhered to his philosophy, don't use fixative unless it's an emergency, like you're painting and you can't paint anymore and you spray on a certain area so you can add more, more medium. That's fine. Media, like more pastel, more pencil, blah, blah, blah. However, as far as a fixative, you don't want to use anything like that because what it does, it darkens your picture. That's the first caveat. The second thing is you'll change the texture. So you work so hard to get the texture exactly where you want, and then you spray this stuff on there. Number one, it's toxic. You might kill the cat, uh, your neighbor's bird. But uh, so I go ahead and I put it on the glass, and it's as good as the day I painted it. And I have some from back when I was in uh, art school that look exactly the same. So I never use any of the uh, the paint, you know? Uh, so I never, I mean, I never use any fixative on my pastels, on my drawing, and now on my ink. So, uh, so that's definitely, you know, a route to go, so. Yeah, and also, you know, that fixative is really toxic. I do have a can of fixative, so let's say if I'm working on a pastel and I overload the surface and I can't get any more pastel on it, then you can go ahead in that area, spray some fixative. That'll give you like another layer, just in case that get happens. Uh, but that's, that's a just in case, so you're very welcome, Mike. So that's a very good question. So let's continue cleaning up and so like I said, we want to go with the softest as possible and then work from there, right? So I'm just going to flick and just soften up this area of her nose. And we want to get rid of any harshness, especially when painting a woman. You know, you don't want her to be harsh. Uh, you definitely want to pull out her grace and her softness, and that's what we are looking for especially if it's a commission, right? Especially. Now, Brad uses fixative on wood art. And tell me why you do that and how is it effective? I'm very interested to hear. So you see how I'm just sort of cleaning things up. And so remember the fifth pot, you know, which was values within the values. So I want you guys to see that there are values within here. So it's not just one sh one value shape, like one shade of gray and that's it. There's more going on in there because it's not just, it's not just at one angle. It's not like a flat board on people's faces and everything. It sort of ebbs and flows, sort of like a mountain range. And that's why you'll see different values within the value because it's not just a flat shape, right? They're not flat planes. They, they have muscle and they have bone and they have tendons and that's what causes. So always look for the lights inside the lights. The lights inside, the details inside the values. And, um, 
but only in the later stages. Remember, this is part four. So this is the first time we're really doing it. So you got to make sure you're not premature with that. You have to find the you have to find the uh, values first before you can start working on the the values within the values. Like cooking, right? The leftovers of the leftovers. <laughs> And so you have to have leftovers before you can have the leftovers of the leftovers. And you have to have the values correct before you can go ahead and do the values inside the values. So Brad says he's using color pencil and there's uh, pyrography, which will break down the wood so what? So it sort of, uh, you know, breaks the walls, the cell walls of the wood. So he feels that it supports the finished products. It strengthens it, right? I can, that's a great technique, so I can definitely see that. Now, does it darken what you paint? Because uh, I found that it darkens, or how does it affect the wood paintings? Uh, if it does darken, you're okay with that, or it doesn't darken? Because I found with pastel and drawing, it darkens it to the point where I personally don't find it acceptable. But that's just me, unless it's an emergency. But I know pyrography, which is uh, wood burning, uh, is different so that's that's a very good point I see very slightly so it's not too bad uh, so we're at 11 12 which is pretty good we're doing pretty good with this live stream um, now remember we want to try with the softest eraser first and progressively work more aggressive I wonder if there's a word for progressively more aggressive, right? That would, escalation, you know? <laughs> the escalation of the aggressive eraser or something like that, you know? But progressively aggressive is fine. I think that gets the point across. So you see, now what we're doing is we're smoothing it out. So you see how I'm smoothing out her, her face now. It's not looking as blotchy. She's coming together. That's what we want to do. And when we come back in with the white pastel, uh, I mean the darkest dark, which is a dark mixture, and the white pastel, things are really going to, you know, get even more, more softer and just really come together. So that's, you know, my technique, which comes from my teachers and everything. That could be a name, progressively more aggressive. <laughs> that's a great name. Definitely. I like that. Thanks, Willie. Yes. You know, my technique is basically arriving all at once at the end. You know, like, you know, that's how I feel. Not... Okay, I got the eyes done. Now let's go do the nose and now let's do the mouth and let's do, you know, I see that so much on YouTube videos. Hey, if it works for you, it works for someone, it floats their boat, God bless them. But as a teaching tool, it's a horrible teaching tool. It doesn't, it doesn't teach people how to uh, paint a painting. It tells them how to paint individual areas. And I don't think that's... Uh, that's not how I was taught, and that's not how I'm going to teach. My way of teaching is, my way of teaching comes from the 19th century French academic painters. Uh, if you look at the progression of my teacher, my teacher's teacher, and his teacher, and his teacher goes all the way down to like William Bouguereau, and uh, Angra and Jacques Louis David. So it really goes down. Wendy, you're still here. Cool. Oh, cool. So I'm glad you're back. That's nice. So, yeah. So, so basically, you know, this is a very classical approach to airbrush. And that's, you know, that's a difference, you know, with me is that you're going to get like almost like if airbrush was available at an art school. That's what you would get with me because I combine my art school training with that, you know. 
Oh, thanks. And uh, so I appreciate that so much, Brad. Brad says the proof is in the result and my technique rocks. Thank you, sir. And you uh, learned it very well. So that's really encouraging, you know, as far as my, you know, my teaching goes. Uh, you know, that the teaching method does work. It's harder. It's harder work. And it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of artistic looking and it's also a lot of intellectualizing uh, the three-dimensional world. So it's, a little of both but. so right now I see her nostril and how it comes up out from from her her cheek there or the orbital where the teeth are I'm not sure I should definitely look that up anatomical wise what that shape is so I'm gonna go with my mono here and I'm definitely looking at this is definitely softer here. I'm a little, a little aggressive here, too aggressive in this shape here. Just soften that up. You know, she's a very pretty, beautiful woman, and we have to make sure that we are on the money with that. So you see, just little the Cupid's bow. Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. So this area right here, that's definitely where we want to uh, soften that up. And you see, we, we are very uh, successfully softening this up. Now, we could have done it with the Tombow, but I don't think it would have been as effective. So that's why I'm coming in with the Mono. Mono Zero, I should say. So now we're looking at the values within the values, right? And we're getting a little more, uh, we're getting a little more succinct with what we're trying to do. And we're actually arriving where we want to be for the next stage. Krylon Fixative has AUV protector in it, Brad says, and if you don't protect the wood, it'll yellow. So I can understand. Hey, what's up, Todd? Good to see you. How are you, my friend? So glad, so glad you're here. So that's cool. Always better late than never. And of course, this video, this this uh, live stream, will be available in its entirety for you to watch on your own. And just like last week, my Patreon members, I will actually work on this in between uh, this week and next week. After I'm done, I'm going to work on it in between, and it'll be a video just for my Patreon members. Uh, so you guys can see and just give you a little bit extra just for those who you know are able to support and then of course still go ahead and do part five with everybody and so that's cool so definitely take care of everyone but just a little bit extra for those people who keep me afloat and I appreciate that so much so little by little she's coming together and I think what's the important thing is that I'm starting to get her expression, you know, starting to get that kind of sexy uh, sort of uh, look that she has and I, I really love it and that's what drew me to this uh, uh, picture from the very beginning. I took this from a video and so this is actually a video still. And thank you, Brad. Brad says, looks amazing already. I really appreciate that, my friend. So let's go ahead and just lighten this up just a little bit. Give some texture to her eyebrow just a little bit here. Nothing too crazy. And we're just going to continue uh, lightening and darkening some areas. Here, I think I went a little crazy with the value. And I'm going to lighten this lower eyelash here. Remember, it's just think of her face and how harsh would you go? You would go as soft as possible, right? And that's a good rule of thumb. If it was her face, would you be that aggressive? And that's a good question whether or not you're really getting too, too harsh, too early. 
And I can see that I could probably raise this eyebrow just a little bit. So go just a little bit higher and a little bit more square. So, so basically I want you guys and girls when you're painting to be, have a cr critical analysis of your work as you're going. So you don't want to just uh, say, oh, I, I, I drew that earlier and I'm just going to live with it. Uh, you can, what you can change, change. What you can't, then you live with it. And then you write down what happened and then you make sure you do better next painting. But on things you can change, you owe it to yourself to make those changes. Um, if you can, if the change is, you know, feasible. So you see, by just squaring off that, uh, that shadow just a little bit, really makes a difference and you know it just starts looking like her a little bit more and more i'm not looking for a likeness i mean i want a likeness but i'm just looking at shapes and values and you know those five things i told you about earlier that's what's going to get you to where you want to go so if we go to the other scene here uh you know you just see it you know it's not bad it's looking pretty good and we're getting there and as we go things are going to look a lot cleaner and uh, so uh, we're still like two episodes away from the finished work okay so always look, look around you know I was getting a little more involved here which is good but always keep looking around and ask yourself okay what is being neglected you always have to ask that too because you don't want one area to be too far uh, advanced than the other where you actually have two different paintings going on. So right here we have our clavicle and our clavicle is moving along here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my freehand shield and I am going to uh, paint her clavicle here just on the edge of the clavicle where it's starting to meet the trapezius muscle right there. See that's so important. These are little little details, you know. Oh, thank you, Wendy. Wendy says she thinks that uh, she looks better than her picture. I appreciate that. So thank you so much. I appreciate it, Wendy. Uh, so nice of you. So let's get back to the clavicle. So when you're painting, it's almost like you got to pretend you have like ADD or something, you know, because you are moving around so much. I actually do have ADD, but it's a good thing because you're not getting stuck in one area. You're you're not you, you almost like you're getting bored in one area and moving on to the next. But the philosophy is making sure that you don't. Uh, I did go parallel there, uh, probably because I wanted to get that edge there. That's probably why I did that. That's very astute that you caught that because there was a slight edge there and I wanted it there as opposed to the uh, whole value going down. But 99% of the time, I definitely do the parallel thing. Also in here, you'll see me go parallel and not perpendicular. So always, par always perpendicular, 90% of the time. Parallel once in a while in specific circumstances such as this. OCD, that's rough, yes. Uh, so yeah, it is, thank you Tone, I appreciate that, sir. So you see we have this clavicle here. That's so important. So if I didn't pay attention to this area, uh, it would be detrimental to the work. Oh, so Willie says he's seen my video on that. And I, he thinks he has it too. That's great. Oh, yes, on ADD. So yes, definitely. Uh, Willie, it's it's rough, you know. I. I really have to rein it in during the day. I had a good day with that. I got a lot done. 
and I was very good and got at least, uh, I would say, 12 hours of artwork done today, which is really great, and I feel comfortable when that happens. Otherwise, I'm doing like 10 things at once, and I end up not doing much of much, and that's hard. So, it got worse for me uh, as I got older, because when you get older, you have responsibilities, and you have other issues going on, such as bills and stuff like that. So, I'm a thinker, so if I'm left, I don't have any money, any money concerns or anything like that. I'll just be fine to go off and start thinking on my own and, you know, doing all different kinds of things such as gardening and, uh, you know, calculus and just really my mind will just go all over and uh, physics, but, you know, it's not easy when you have the day-to-day -day struggles. I think that's what made it worse for me. Bills, exactly. Exactly, Willie. So uh, that is, as you get older, you have a lot more on your mind because you have a lot more on your plate. And I think people like us who are like thinkers uh, really need to have that sort of freedom of thought to concentrate on one thing. Otherwise, it sort of gets in the way. Mind you, I'm extremely productive but I feel I can always be more productive. You know, I can always get more done. See that? We had a little skating and what happened was I stayed on there a little too long. Luckily I was able to wipe it. So when you're doing a freehand shield, you wanna make sure that you're a good distance away and uh, you don't pull back too far on the trigger. This way you don't over wet the surface. And I think for some reason there was some uh, some ink got on there. That happens. That's something we can definitely take care of. But always be careful. These things are great tools, but they can ruin your day. So make sure you always wipe these things down, you know? Hey, Todd, have a great night, man. I'm so glad you made it here all the way from San Diego. Remember, Friday we're doing a live stream here and on Facebook, whatever's easier for you, at 8 o'clock. Bring your favorite drink, a pencil, and a piece of paper, and we're just going to go at it. We're just going to have a good time. And so definitely, I'll, I'll put information on that. So yeah, we're in our final two minutes of today's live stream, guys. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it, as always. You guys make my Wednesday. Uh, so when? So that'll be Friday at 8 o'clock, you know? Okay, and uh, Brad, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming by. And so, you know, everybody, it's so cool. I'm always going to give you the full two hours because you guys are worth it. So, you know, you guys are definitely worth it. So that's why I don't, don't cut anything off, you know? Oh, thank you, Wendy. I appreciate that. And Willie says, the first time for me not working over 25 years and I get nothing done all day. See, that's the thing. When you have that time, your mind goes in 10 directions and isn't focused on one. And that's our problem, Willie. So we're working on that. One of the techniques I have is I write it down. I'll show you something that I have here, which is really cool, real quick. Uh, let's see if I could... Uh, Pull that off let's see so just very quick guys I'm going to show you a dry erase board that I have and as you can see let me go to this screen uh, now sometimes I have older things but you see I have a dry erase board and I just go ahead and put things so you see uh, for Wendy's next class, we haven't scheduled yet. Phil's class and ink paintings, portraits. So anything I need to do and keep uh, track of, I do that. And that sort of helps me, Willie. If I write it down, it makes it more real for me and sort of just be my own taskmaster. That helps a lot. So uh, maybe try that, Willie. That might help, you know. So we are at 11.30, guys. Thank you so much, Tone and Mike and Wendy and uh, Brad. Uh, 
you know, Ron and uh, Emil. So, uh, Gloria, thank you so much. Uh, so, yes, go home for the class, Wendy. That would be great. And Willie, I hope that helps. So, guys, don't forget I give the online classes via Skype and also my ink mixtures. I'm going to be doing uh, pastels coming up as well. So, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Stay inside. Stay safe social distancing and all that and we'll all get through this god willing so thank you for making my wednesday really fantastic i'll see you guys friday at eight o'clock